What up, what up, what up? It is Jason William Johnson. Um, and I'm excited uh, for this week's PRL. Can you guys hear me? I got a microphone. I got to connect my microphone. I got two microphones, luckily. Don't need to be doing like maintenance online, but you got to do what you got to do. All right. Plug that in. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, excited for this week's, um, you know, couple conversations. I'm going to be talking with Sheena Wynn, um, who was looking for her ideal match. Uh, so we're going to have a, con we're going to learn her personality type. And then we're going to have a conversation with her about, you know, based on what Myers-Briggs, the typology says, you know, who her ideal match is, what she should be looking for and things like that. And then also, I'm going to have a conversation with um, Maisha Williamson. Um, she's an entrepreneur and she kind of wants to understand how she can use Myers-Briggs, her personality type, um, to better, you know, structure her business just to make sure she has work-life balance because we know that's very, very important nowadays. Um, so, um, pretty much that's what we have cracking this evening. Um, so I'm going to give it about one more minute, you know, 701, 701, 703, then I'll bring the first guest on. Um, so pretty much, um, been testing this little concept out last week went awesome. I'm expecting another, you know, um, good live this week, but I'll also be doing some personality based content, you know, starting next week on YouTube you know, um, things to help you, uh, you know, like if you're an entrepreneur, you know, help you with your career, but then also to help you with your personal and professional relationships. Hey, Anne-Marie, how you doing? Um, so yeah, excited about, you know, what, what, what we have coming in the coming weeks um, as far as that type of content. Um, and then without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and bring on my first guest, Mrs. Sheena Wynn. All right, Sheena, how are you doing? Doing well, doing well. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, doing pretty good. I know you you warned me that you have a toddler. I trust you. Yes, now. yes, I do. And if now she pops, she's... If, if she pops up, it's cool, because I know Jahar <laughs> will pop up in here any given time. So it's completely okay. understandable. Um, so um, excited to have this conversation with you. Um, hopefully, we can provide you know some value. You know, I can provide some value to you. Um, and, you know, just tell us why you wanted to hop on PRL this week. Well, to be honest, Jason, I, there are moments when people say that I'm a little difficult to work with, I guess, because I'm, I have a strong, I, what I consider to be a strong personality. And it's because I know what I want and that's pretty much you know what how i feel um the guys that when you're wrong the guys that um are checking for me i necessarily i don't cut for them okay go over there <laughs> thank you honey um i'm checking and the ones that i check for they on some other stuff so i'm trying to figure out exactly Am I looking in the wrong direction? Am I looking at the wrong things? I know that, you know, in a relationship, it's deeper than physical. So now what part of personality am I not seeing or getting uh, that makes me compatible with someone? Got you, got you. So pretty much, hopefully, uh, we'll be able to help you with this, um, help you kind of understand that. Um, so pretty much, Without further ado, um, I'm going to go ahead and give you the four question personality assessment, the verbal one. So just a little context um, on how this works. I'm going to describe um, four. There's four different dimensions of human personality. So I'm going to describe four different scenarios. And each one of those scenarios, I'm going to describe two types of people. And then for each one of those scenarios, tell me which one sounds more like you. Right. So and there may be some instances where you may feel as if. Oh, both of these describe me. Um, so in those instances, pick the one that you would choose if someone put a gun to your head and said, what's your letter? What's your personality type? Choose that one. 
Um, don't think about it. Just kind of choose the one that makes the most sense for you. Um, and then once we're done with the assessment, I'll be able to kind of tell you what your personality type is. And then from there, we'll be able to um, discuss um, your, um, we can, we can go have a conversation about who your ideal match is, what you should be looking for, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and hopefully you can walk away with some understanding and some additional things you can be looking up. Um, you know, so, so when they arrive, you know, you, you have an idea of what you're looking for. So let's get into it. So there's four different dimensions of human personality type. Um, and I'm gonna describe these four scenarios. So the first scenario, um, uh, focuses on how we recharge. The first type of person recharges by being around others and doing activities outside of themselves. Socialization energizes them and it, re it reinvigorates them. Um, and, you know, if, if you think about like a video game, it increases their energy bar. Whereas um, the second type of person recharges by being alone. They may enjoy socializing, but after a while, they got to be they got to be alone to be with their own thoughts. You know, maybe unwind, read a book, relax, because socializing and being around others drains their energy bar. So to bring their energy bar back up, they have to, you know, be alone. Which one sounds more like you? To recharge, I would say be alone. OK, so the second dimension, the second dimension focuses on um, what type of information you prefer. The first type of person prefers information that's um, concrete and tangible and that's more in the physical world. If they can't touch it, see it, taste it or smell it, it doesn't hold as much value. They like things that are um, tried, true and proven and they're not as comfortable with experimentation. They're more present oriented than future oriented and more detail oriented than big picture. The second type of person recharge, that type of per second type of person uh, prefers information that's abstract. They live in the, the world of ideas and concepts. They're very open to experimentation. They're more big picture than detail oriented. They're more future oriented than present oriented. Um, and they, you know, kind of live in the world of ideas and concepts, seeing data, you know, and being able to make connections that people don't readily make um, and things like that. Which one are more are you? The first one or the second one? The second one. Okay. Third, a third dimension focuses on how we prefer to make decisions. The first type of person makes decisions on based on what they perceive to be a set of logical rules and principles. They don't consider their feelings or the feelings of others as much as the information itself. They try to be more objective in their decision making and they trust their mind more than their heart. The second type of person makes decisions based on the human element. They strive for a win-win situation. They consider their feelings as well as the feelings of others when making a decision um, and, they, and they try to strive for harmony and they trust their heart more than their mind. Uh, which one does sound more like you? The second one. All right. Last dimension talks about how you prefer to structure your environment. The first person, the first type of person um, prefers to um, have their day organized. You know, they're going to have their lunch at nine, their, their, their breakfast at nine, their lunch at 12, their dinner at five. They probably even um, like schedule their, um, their, their, their their social time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, your house is probably to very clean, very organized and structured. Um, and if, you know, your schedule falls off or if somebody's late, um, you know, and, and, and they don't like reach out to you in an appropriate time, it probably stresses you out or annoys you. The second type of person is more flexible. They kind of go with the flow. They let the day take care of itself. They may have some things they want to accomplish, but if something else comes up, they're very comfortable pushing it back. Um, and they just kind of go with the flow. They let the day take care of itself. They're not. And if they are overly planned, they feel like trapped and they don't feel as, you know, free. Which one sounds more like you? That's a tough one, Jason. I'm kind of in the middle on that one. But if someone had a gun to my head, I would probably say the second one. All right. All right. So whatever that. So, OK. okay. And like on a scale of one to five, how how would one kind of being like us oh, 50 50 and five being like, no, nah, I'm definitely more on this end. Which one? Which <laughs> I'm in the middle with that one, honestly, because I am a planner. I am definitely a planner. However, if something doesn't come the way that I've planned or, you know, something comes up, I'm okay with, you know, rearranging and um, making other options available. Um, it, I would oh. probably say, and I'm, 
so I would say, would you if you plan like your personal time and, and as well, like if you left your own devices on trips, like trips? Oh yeah, I'm the activity queen. We got this at nine, and then at twelve we're gonna go eat lunch mm. at wherever, and then at the new, you know. So, but on the other hand, I'm okay with. Let's not overthink it. Make a choice. Which one? Okay, let's go with the first one. The J. Yeah, I guess. I mean, so. Okay, so the, the more structured and organized. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So based on what you told me, I'm going to share your personality type. Let me change it. Give me one second. All right. Hmm. Give me one second. I'm thinking about something. Why do you have a job? This one you can't go to. Pick another one. Pick another one. All right. So you're an INFJ, but I usually have like a little like reveal video that I show and everything. But for some reason, the INFJ video is not popping up, but you're an INFJ personality type. So you're an introvert, which means you're in, you're, you're more, um, you're, you're more, you chill more by yourself. You recharge by being alone. You're an intuitive, which means you're more abstract concept, strategic and theoretical. You're a feeler, which means you make decisions based on your heart, uh, more so than your mind. And you're a judger, which means you're more organized and structured. So, with the INFJ, the interesting thing is, is that you're probably the most rarest personality type, probably like less than 1% of the population is an INFJ. So it's a very, very, very unique personality type. So as an INFJ, you're more of a counselor. So like you're the person that people call when they need advice, when they need guidance, when they need support. Like you're that friend who's going to be on the phone with that friend for, you know, multiple hours, you know, helping them solve a problem to a limit. So as long as a person feels as if as long as you feel as the person is trying to like better themselves, you'll do whatever you can to support them. But the moment you feel as if they're not um, doing you know, what they need to do and they're just trying to like complain as opposed to really try to solve a problem. It's like you, you will lose that patience real quick with that, because if they're not trying to if they're just if they just want to complain, they just want to be frustrated and they don't want to really make a significant change change. Then, right. you know, uh, INFJ and all of the idealist types in general, the inspire types, they just you know, it's not that you don't want to. You just can't. It's like you get to a point where it's just like, nah, I can't like pour any more because they're not trying to do what they need to do. Does any of that sound accurate? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why and that's one of the things I, why I was trying to get my sisters to participate, because for that, that's a perfect example. When they call me, we talk and they ask me something and I tell them the truth on how I really feel about it. And I give them, you know, recommendations and stuff. And if they act like they don't, you know, they want to stay there, then you know what? stay there i'm not i mean and that's exactly how i feel yes that's very yeah accurate. and the and the interesting thing about the infj personality type also is that like do you ever find yourself like having like almost like psychic flashes like <laughs> like intuitions and things like coming to you and yes. like you can't explain why but they just come to you mm -hmm. and you're usually right yeah so like People with the INFJ personality type and the INTJ to some extent, because your dominant function is what's called introverted intuition, um, they they are more prone to like that type of psychic insight almost, like because pretty much your dominant function is introverted intuition. So introverted intuition is like it's the function that senses things. Mm. You can't, but it's not like logical. You can't explain it. Like introverted thinking is like okay. Based on what I've seen, this is the way I'm going to structure the world internally. Introverted intuition is not like that. It's just you have these random insights, inspirations, premonitions, things that come, and you can't explain why, but oftentimes you're right. Mm. Does that sound accurate? Yes, sir. Okay, awesome. So what one thing, one of the things that I will say with that is always trust that. 
-hmm. right? Because sometimes you don't always have the, 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 the evidence in the physical world or like the evidence like in a situation to prove that you're right. But a lot of times you are. So I will just say, if you don't remember anything else, trust that intuition when it comes to you in relationships and career opportunities and all of these different things. Trust that intuition because it's actually a strength of your personality type. You have this intuition that just kind of comes to you and you can't explain why. Like you're one of them people where somebody can be upset and you'll be like, they'll be like oh, I'm fine. You'll be like, nah, something going on. You can see it, right? So just trust that intuition because it's actually a gift that comes with your particular type of personality type in general. So um, pretty much, um, yeah. So let's get into like who your ideal match is. Mm -hmm. uh, your ideal match is what's called an ENFP. So extrovert, um, um, extrovert, uh, not ENTP, I'm sorry, ENTP, uh, mm -hmm. extrovert. Um, so they're, they recharge by being around others. They're an intuitive. So they're more abstract and theoretical like you. They're a thinker, which means they make decisions based on their heart, their mind, not their heart, and they're a perceiver, which means that, you know, they kind of go with the flow, right? And in general, with, with typology, you typically want that second letter to be the same because that's the communi communication letter, right? Where like two intuitives, you will have a conversation about world peace, philosophy, you know, it'll be all type of different conversations you'll have, but oftentimes they're very conceptual, right? They're very, you know, um, high level. They're very abstract, et cetera, et cetera. And that's kind of how people with an intuitive preference communicates. So like you would share that with the ENTP type, but then, you know, the, the E balances the I. So the extroversion balances the introversion because sometimes if somebody is overly extroverted, you know, they need somebody to kind of help them chill. Mm -hmm. um, somebody's more of an introvert. They need somebody to kind of pull them out. So there's a balance there provided that, both of the preferences are about average or moderate. So, so pretty much, you know, if somebody's a really strong E and a really strong I, right, mm -hmm. and they come together, it may not work as well just because, um, you know, it's too extreme. But right. most people aren't like on the far extreme. Most people are in the middle. So in a general, an E and an I, you know, for the most part, there's some compatibility based on that, right? Um, because you will balance each other out. Same thing with the thinking and the feeling. Some things require logic. Some things require empathy and, 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 and you know, and the human element. Mm -hmm. You know, you, as a unit, you'll be able to balance each other out in that regard. You know, same thing with the perceiving and judging. You know, the judger will help things be more structured. Structure. The perceiver kind of like, you know, help create some flexibility. But it seems like you have some balance in your J and your P. So you can flex either way, right, mm -hmm. in that regard, right? So mm -hmm. like... So like pretty much you may even work well with it since you do are more flexible you may even work well with an entj you know as well just because um you know you can flex to that p side you know in your relationship or anything like that so i would say ultimate match entp secondary match enfp third match maybe an entj right and then since you flex i would even say enfj as well so you have four really solid options that could work for you as far as personality wise. So the thing is, is that um, pretty much as an INFJ, like one of the challenges you may have is, and then, you know, your mom too, you mm -hmm. may like not be as social as far as like going out, things like that. You have your close friends that you rock with and you tend to probably have like deeper, closer, really, fewer friends that are deeper in like connection, right? As opposed to like, just a whole bunch of associates and things like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. But like, like sometimes like, you know, dating is opportunity. Like, like you, you're at a grocery store, you know, <laughs> y'all you know, touch each other's hand when y'all like grabbing the milk and y'all look at each other's eyes. And it's just like, you know, but if you're, in, if you're at home, when that opportunity can happen, you know what I mean? You miss out. <laughs> right? So the thing is, is that you got to put your place up where, people who may be your match is mm -hmm. ENTPs like one of the things about the ENTP type and I'm an ENTP which is funny um very like the debater like so they're always like analyzing things like playing devil's advocate having mm -hmm. you know and it's not like emotional it's literally like they can see both sides of a perspective so they're really good so that makes them a really good at like kind of conflict resolution so they can yeah. see your side and they can see the um their side as well but you know, you may see them like 
doing things that are more intellectually stimulating, right? So, you know, I mean, ENTPs do have a party, a party inside ENFPs as well. But, um, you know, especially as we get older, you may see them nor you may meet them in professional organizations, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, you know, I know a great organization that I was involved in for years was Urban League Young Professionals. Hey, how you doing? (laughs) <laughs> or like so you so you might find them in professional organizations you know and like you know it, like you might meet them at work you know you might meet them you know like and like i think professional organizations are really really good place to find an entp or enfp right because mm-hmm. the ENTP is going to want to be able to like go somewhere that's intellectually stimulating for them um and then also with the entp is that they're also you know they're kind of status oriented like focused not like in a like in a um well i'm too good for so it can happen but that's more that's not the personality pattern that's more individual characteristic you know so there's certain things that personality doesn't account for like i was talking to my wife the other day and she was like well oh girl this person i know is selfish i'm like that doesn't you ain't gonna read no personality description that says somebody's selfish right Mm -hmm. so there's things that can influence how a personality translates um that's more life experience based on life experiences and upbringing that may not necessarily like be part of the personality code so a person can you can have honest entps dishonest right. ENTPs, stuck up entps humble entps right but mm. it, uh, pretty much in general they tend to think they're smart um and usually are so you <laughs> so they tend to emerge like as leaders in organizations and things okay. like that so you might want to look in professional organizations, get involved with like some type of charity or you know professional group, you know, um, you know like professional you know, um, mixers, those type of things, right? I'm trying to think where would I go if I was still single? Hmm. Um, yeah, like after a while, the club and those type of things don't really get you know. Right. Those- I don't get me wrong, you might meet somebody there, but online, obviously, everybody's online. That's another place you may want to meet one, um, and things like that. So, the best thing I would say is kind of like, um, just and this is just dating in general, like, you like if you're at home and you're not like out at least mingling with people, mm-hmm. you want anybody, right? And, and, and INFJ can comfortably do that, like, they can just be at home, chill, focus. You know, talk to their three friends that they really mm-hmm. rock super hard and be good. Um, Coffee Meets Bagel is a really good app. You know, I see my wife in, uh, mm-hmm. on the chat in the chat, but that's what me and her met. So you might want to look at Coffee Meets Bagel. It's more people in that regard. Um, but um, yeah, so like any other questions you want to know about like the ENTP? Um, and then, like I said, the ENFP would be a real good one too for you. Yeah, that's what I put. Yeah. So 16 personalities, if you go to that website and pretty soon I'll have my own website with my own like personality descriptions and stuff. But for now, you got to go to the 16 personalities.com. Uh, they have really, really good like personality descriptions. So you mm-hmm. can kind of read up, learn more about each of those particular types um, and you know how you may be compatible with them. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, I think you hit it on the nail, though. A lot of those descriptions and the funny thing is i everything you said i probably can pick if i could make me a person i've dated probably somebody out of each of those you know categories and uh but i just haven't found one with all of you know so i'm sure i'm not gonna find that perfect one right because because not do they all have that each descriptor it does one person like you said uh uh, any uh what ENTP ENTP so the difference between ENTP and ENFP the ENTP is a thinker they have a thinking preference the ENFP has a feeling preference right but those two types are very very single similar because they both like are very like abstract theoretical very social um very um you know like love ideas love con- conversing tend to have a lot of charisma you know personality and things like that um so there are some similarities between them the difference is is that the entp is um their secondary function auxiliary function 
is um, um, introverted thinking. So like they kind of create like an internal framework of how the world works in their head. So they're going to be like, based on this experience, based on this experience, this is my unique philosophy. This is my unique approach to how I think the world works. Right. Whereas the 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 the, the ENFP is going to be more value oriented. So based on what I've experienced and explored, because both of these types like love to explore the world of ideas and concepts. This is what I believe is truth for me. You know what I mean? So the the thinker the thinker is going to look at it from more of a logical logical structural standpoint the feeler is going to make look at it from more of the feel the value standpoint right um so like th that's the difference between the two but yeah. other than that they are very very similar types ENTP or ENFP all right well thank you so much Jason that tells me a lot and that helps a lot so now so, I know where to so one of the things I will say, I'll just give you a couple of things like with an ENTP, an ENTP and ENFP are in general are going to be very, very attracted to confidence. Right. So just be comfortable being you. Right. Um, they're mind mates. So that intellectual stimulation, you know, the, that's going to be really, really important to them. You know, being able to like, like, you know, have a conversation that's, that engages them. That's going to be so you may find yourself having a conversation with them and it may switch to different topics and you know they can definitely end up being those types where you talk to like like to four o'clock in the morning like you in high school mm -hmm. just because of the ability to be able to switch and like engage in a variety of different topics but that intellectual stimulation like typically when two intuitives start communicating they feel it because 75 percent of the population it has a sensing preference which is more concrete and tangible so they're going to talk about you know um events um you know what they did for the day it's not going to be really more it's not going to be as conceptual conversation it's going to be more like you know facts um and you know current events things like that right which is cool but for an intuitive that may feel like small talk um but only 25 percent of the population has an intuitive preference mm -hmm. so when an intuitive runs into one another intuitive they know it because yeah. it's like there's that click and there's an initial connection and things like that right so uh whatever relationship you end up in i think for communication purposes and just for like interests long term you want to definitely make sure they have that intuitive function but that intuitive preference mm -hmm. got it got it and i think that's been my main uh setback thus far uh just the portion um Again, I haven't been going to uh, the the professional business, you know, environments for me to to have a stimulating conversation or dialect with another. So now I I see why. Awesome, awesome. So, any other questions? No, I think you you ironed it out for me, and I I know exactly what I'm looking for. All right. Well, it's a pleasure chatting with you, Sheena. Um, tell the little one I said hello. I will. <laughs> Thank All you right. so much, Jason. Okay. All right. Bye bye. Bye. Um, so, up to the ring is Maisha Williams. Hi. Hey. Hey. How's, it going? How's everything going with you? Good. Good. How are you? Awesome. I'm doing pretty good. Good. Awesome. Yeah, so when I saw you post it, I was like, hey, it sounds like fun. Let me right, <laughs> let's go. Do it then. So hopefully it's a little bit more than fun. Hopefully you find some value in the right. conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah, we're about to get into it. So um, pretty much uh, before we go ahead and do like the verbal assessment, um, go ahead and tell me why you, you know, feel free to share why you wanted to hop on. Yeah. So you said um, talk about business based on personality. Anybody want to do that? So I just had a question that was kind of rolling around in my head. Um, I started a new business. A lot of people have been asking me, how do they transition into tech? I transitioned into tech, um, not having a previous tech background. So um, I've started a business consulting people <laughs> how to transition. So one of the things I've been thinking um, on terms of scale and the lifestyle that I want, do I want to do a group coaching program where I'm hand holding a group or do I want to do a course where it's do it yourself? I feel like hand holding a group would definitely 
um, cause bigger transformations and faster transformations. But for scale and also the uh, non-traditional lifestyle that I want to live, um, an individual course where they do it itself will be more beneficial. Like I want to travel a lot. I want to not stay in the same place. Um, so maybe a course where they do it themselves might be more beneficial. Got you. Got you. So there's implications because you're saying from the client standpoint, you know that the group coaching would probably right. be more transformative, but mm -hmm. they also have to be this balance between like your own personal work life balance as far as the type of lifestyle you want to create, right? right. Because you wanna you wanna you wanna you wanna be an entrepreneur, but you wanna also have the freedom. You wanna mm -hmm. like kind of architect your life the way you want to. You don't wanna like be like self-employed where you just work for right. yourself. And you still feel like you in a job, right? Right, right. So, like, so there's that balance standpoint, right? So hopefully, and I'm gonna be honest, like which one you prefer as far as from a structural standpoint, definitely, you know, your personality is gonna play a major um part of that. So let's go ahead and get into the verbal assessment. So there's four different dimensions to human personality. Um, and um, pretty much in each um dimension, I'm gonna describe two types of people. Simply tell me which one sounds more like you. Um, for some of them, they may sound equally close. Mm -hmm. And in those instances, um, if you're having a hard time deciding which is which, just imagine somebody putting a gun in your head and saying, is it J or P? And then just choose that mm -hmm. one, right? So uh, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into it. So the first um, dimension of human personality type focuses on how you prefer to recharge. The first type of person recharges by being around others. Socialization gives them energy. Doing activities outside of themselves invigorates them, um, and it increases their energy bar. If they're alone for a long period of time, it like if you think about like a video game. That's me. Great, right? <laughs> I already know that's me. All right, so we can go ahead and go to the next dimension. The second dimension um, um, focuses on what type of information you prefer. The first type of person prefers information that's concrete and tangible, that's more in the physical world. If they can't touch it, see it, taste it, or smell it, it doesn't hold as much value. They like things that are tried, true, and proven, are more present-oriented than future-oriented, and more detail-oriented than big-picture-oriented. The second type of person uh, prefers information that's more conceptual. They live in a world of concepts, ideas. They like to find connections between seemingly unrelated things, patterns, and data. Um, the second part. Okay. Third dimension uh, focuses on um, how you prefer to um, like make decisions. The first type of person makes decisions based on what they perceive to be a set of logical rules and principles. They don't consider their feelings or the feelings of others as much as the information itself. They strive to be more objective and they try to think more with their mind than their heart. The second type of person makes decisions um, based on the human element. So they consider their feelings and the feelings of others and their unique values when making a decision. So they strive for har harmony in decision making. Um, and they consider they 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 are, they they, are, they they trust their heart, you know, you know, more than their mind. The second. Okay. Last um, dimension focuses on how you prefer to structure your um, lifestyle. The first type of person is more um, con is structured and organized. So they're going to have like breakfast at nine, lunch at 12, dinner at five. They like to plan out even their like leisure time. Um, and like if they like to come to a resolution with things quicker and they like to have everything planned out. So like and then they tend to like have a very structured and clean and organized home. Um, and in general, if someone is like late or if their schedule's thrown off, it frustrates them. The second type of person is more flexible and they kind of go with the flow. They have some things that they want to accomplish. They may have a to-do list, but they kind of let the day take care of it. Um, you know, it, they're very comfortable pushing a date back or changing a date in the event that, you know, something comes up or they just want to, um, you know, and then also they're more, um, they like, they don't really plan their leisure time. So like, if you ask like somebody that's a P, what you doing this weekend? Like, I don't know. It ain't this weekend. Right. <laughs> one is more like you. Hmm. That one's actually hard. The reason why it's hard, I'll tell you what I do. So I am. Don't, um, don't think about what you do, because a lot of people conflate it. Because with work, this is a J world, so you kind of gotta like everybody. Yeah, has yeah. That J function. How are you naturally if it if you didn't have to work or do anything? I would be the second. Yeah, okay. Be the second. So you're ENFP. Um, okay. let me, 
do your let me do your reveal because I do have that one. I'm slipping this week. <laughs> All right, there we go. Yep. So, um, pretty much, I'm very similar to ENFP. I'm an ENTP, and my T and my F are very, very close. So I sometimes. You know, I, I I I have PF energy in regards, right? Mm -hmm. Because everything's a, they, it's not a either or, it's more of a spectrum as far as like, right. you know, so like, so I can definitely relate to your personality type a lot. So with an ENFP, you're going to value freedom immensely, right? Mm -hmm. Freedom and authenticity and the ability and the freedom, having the freedom to explore having the freedom to try things out, having the freedom to travel, having the freedom to do the things that you want to do, right? Because like with an ENFP, like in general, you enjoy work as long as it's aligned with your values and as long as it's energizing. But when it comes to like paperwork, when it comes to like, you know, the mundane, you know, stuff that you got to do that's very necessary in business, it's going to frustrate you. And, you know, and, and it's going to make things hard. So coming from that standpoint, the, the coaching versus the, the courses, what I would recommend is this. I would, I would lead with the course offering just because once you're done with it, you're done with it. You ain't got to like, you know, like book appointments with people. You ain't, you don't have your, you don't have to have your time like hindered um you, you you don't have to like you know deal with any of those things the, the the irony of it though and and the problem with it is as an enfp you're very inspirational right. and, they'll, and they'll be very very beneficial for those people for you to be able to engage with them in some way shape form or fashion right so that's kind of like the quandary like you know like where does the balance come between providing like value to your clients and really helping them reach those outcomes because mm -hmm. I mean ENFP is going to be very mission driven and you seem like you have this is a very mission driven business right. right so you want the mission to be achieved but you want to kick it too right <laughs> right you know? like, so that's like the balance you have to like deal with right so from a business coaching standpoint the way I would the way I would do it would, would be this I would have the, the the course be my core offering if you want to offer some sort of like like coaching i would maybe do like a monthly coaching call for like people to check in right just that way you can touch them a little bit and then if they want it like you like in a regular basis i would i would charge a lot of fucking money for that you know what i mean just because like if you're going to like hinder your freedom you want to make sure that you're it's like worth my while. that's worth your while right mm -hmm. you know monetarily Except, and then also, like, even from the type of clients you're going to get, right? Like, if you're super premium, those clients are going to be motivated for outcomes and goals right. because they, you know, they voted with their dollar that I'm serious and I'm focused, right? I really want to do this. So, like, by charging, you're going to actually increase the, um, the impact that you're going to be able to make because you're only going to have those highly motivated clients that are willing to do whatever they need to do in order to achieve the mission. Right. Mm -hmm. Because what you don't want and like what Sheena I talked about earlier, you guys are both part of the inspire temperament, um, INFP, ENFP, INFJ, ENFJ. And like if a person's focused, you're willing to do whatever you want need to do to support them if they're serious about becoming better, if they're serious about your support. But like if you're if, if they're if they're BSing or all they want to do is complain or if they always got these excuses, you're going to run out of patience. And then it's going to be like, oh, I got to go see this person. And I really don't really do want to do that. Right. So I would I would have tiered services. So the course would be the primary offering, you know, and like, you know, that would be the, the primary, um, you know, the, the primary offering. Maybe if you want to give people a personal touch, maybe you do a monthly coaching call. Right. You know, and some people may not want that. Some people may not want the monthly coaching call. But if they do, you know, maybe it's a slight upcharge for that. Right. Um, another thing you may want to do is a Facebook group. Right. So also, like maybe you have a Facebook group 
where people have access to that Facebook group and then they can um they can um you know you know get their questions answered that way. Um but like if 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 I'm gonna do like any deep engagement, if I was you, yeah, I would yeah. I would charge for that. You gotta pay. Right. You know what I mean? Because then that's preventing you from you know going somewhere with your daughter. That's preventing you from you know booking that trip. That's mm -hmm. preventing you from doing like a lot of things that you want to do as an ENFP. So it's gonna have to cost. Like it may have to pay for the next one. You you know what I mean? Right. So like that's the approach that I would take. Um, if I was you in that regard, like um, that's the approach I would take. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, and it's funny you like you hit everything. I mean, you're a pro at this, right? But <laughs> you hit everything right on the head. And um, as you probably know, I used to have a tutoring business, and I posted one day that I a couple years ago I said I only work with A and B students from now on. Um, I only work for A and B students helping them for college. Man, my post lit up. Everybody's like, "Well, we got students, other students that need help. We need have students that." I was Those like, ain't "The ones for you, right?" <laughs> it's not. It's not me. Like, I can't motivate somebody. I don't want to motivate somebody to want to do it. I want people who want it, and I can coach and refine them um, to help them get results faster. Um, but like you said, a lot of my work is inspirational, and I spend a lot of time like working on their mindset to make sure that with my tutoring clients or even my transitional clients, tech transition clients, just the mindset, making sure they, they refine their mindset, but they're usually very motivated, you know? So no, that's, that's, you hit the nail on the head. Yeah. So, and then that way, and then also it kind of prevents you, like what you need to do is this, you either, and then from a like administrative standpoint and like designing your business model, you either gonna need to either hire an assistant or, or automate it as much as possible, right? Yeah, I was gonna ask you. I was and like, yeah, the paperwork like, you did on. Me, and for me, I'm guilty of that, right? Because I'm an ENTP. I hate that type of stuff. Like, mm -hmm. you know, my wife, she's an INTJ. She loves all of that. But like, I, I yeah. So you gotta like either hire an assistant. You know, as the business scales, if it grows, you even even if it's like just you coaching, you still gonna need like to start putting some systems and some people in place. So eventually you probably will need to hire like some sort of assistant and things like that. But like you need a very low maintenance, low, like like very like automated business model, very like automated, like um back office type situation. Like even down to like using like you know like 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 having automated email responses mm -hmm. if you'll forget to do that right if you don't get it right away right so it's just like like and one of the things about like knowing your personality what makes things beautiful is the fact that um by knowing your personality then you can create an environment around you as an entrepreneur that like like maximizes its strengths and manages around its its, its, its its weaknesses, right? So like knowing that you're an ENFP, how you operate, things like that is really, really important. Um, so like, yeah, so just kind of think about how you're going to structure the business because like the thing is, is like the product itself, you're going to be fire at that, right? Because that's like your passion. It aligns with your personality type. It's mission driven. It aligns with your values, et cetera, et cetera. But all of the unsexy stuff that has to be done, like you got to solve for that, like either by hiring somebody or just automating it as much as possible where you don't have to do as much. Like mm -hmm. I always used to tell myself, you know, when I, when I was younger, I used to rap and I still got some bars if somebody wanted it. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm not here for that right now. But, um, <laughs> Go ahead, go freestyle for a second. One of the things I'm coming with a Myers Briggs um, 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 song that's coming real soon. <laughs> I'm gonna share it with y'all. But um, one of the things that I always tell myself now is like, Jason, you need to work like a rapper. So mm -hmm. think about what a rapper does. They make their record. They, you know, they, 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 you know, promote it. You know, and then they go to the concert and they perform it and they done. But most of the time, like, it, but they're getting most of their money from the record being played. You know what I mean? From the streams, from the downloads, back in the day, from the CD sales, et cetera, et cetera. Like, and for ENFP or ENTP, that's a very, very good structure. You built the course, it's done, right? You getting money coming in regularly, right? When people are signing up for it, you got a check coming in. You ain't got to teach them, you ain't got this, that, whatever. But just like the rapper, if I'm going to have to show up, 
I, I'm gonna get paid, right? Yeah. So it's like that's the equivalent of the coaching. Like if you gotta show up, you're gonna it's gonna be worth your while, right? Mm -hmm. So I always tell like people that are ENT, like ENTPs, ENFPs, ESFPs, EP types in particular, like try to structure your business like a rapper or a performer, mm -hmm. because like pretty much like that's gonna how you're gonna optimize yourself for success. And then what does the rapper have? They have their manager who handles the contract negotiations. Right. They yeah. have their um, their tour manager who manages like the bookings and things like that. So that's how you have to structure the business, and that allows you to be free and do all of those things. But if you have to like do a lot of the administrative stuff, like even if you love the business, you're gonna hate the business because you're gonna hate the stuff that you hate doing. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, that's and that's accurate. That's accurate. I find myself to be really good at getting people transformations, but not as great at the business stuff. So um, that's completely accurate. That's completely accurate. Do you give employees or hires personality tests for you certain? Can. You can. Yeah. And I can even tell you probably what you need on that front. Like you an ENFP, you probably need somebody who has a sensing, um, somebody, a, a thinking and judging preference, right? And probably a sensing, thinking, judging preference. So like, uh, like an ESTJ or an ISTJ, um, probably would be a good look for you. Um, just because the, they have the sensing preference, which means they're more detail oriented, they're more focused on the details, running the day to day, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then also like, um, pretty much, um, like they, like if you have a vision, somebody with a STJ preference can like definitely make it happen. Right. Um, but from a, uh, from, but I also say this, but from a thought partner standpoint, but you being an ENFP and this compatibility stuff doesn't just work for relationships. It also works for business. A INTJ is like your ideal match as far as like, you know, like connecting with someone. And that may even work like because with the INTJ, they don't want to be like on in the like in the they don't want to like be in the spotlight. They kind of want to be more like behind the scenes um, and be more strategic. Right. And they'll help get things done, make sure things are ran as well. So I actually think like any of the sensing, judging, sensing, thinking, judging types, ESTJ, ISTJ, maybe even the ISFJ as well. I mean, all of them, actually, the e all four of those types, all four of the um, manager types, ESTJ, ISTJ, ESFJ, ISFJ probably will work. But like, I think an INTJ, which you in particular, would be very, very interesting because it was like, INTJ, INTJ, yeah, introvert, intuitive, thinker, judger. That would be a very, very interesting combination because that would not only be somebody who helps you get stuff done, but they'll almost be a strategic thought partner as well. Not that the ESTJ or like any other types couldn't be a strategic thought partner as well, but INTJs and ENTJs in particular have the unique combination of being able to be idea people and execution people. Just taking notes. Thank you. Oh, take it all down. That's so funny because um, actually um, INTJ, I think when you're describing that, I think that's my sister and um my child's father <laughs> they're exactly like that so uh, it's funny and um my sister knows like my strengths and weaknesses so sometimes i pay her to handle that administrative stuff <laughs> it's just mm -hmm. what it is so um it's interesting and it's like um i can see those qualities and people in my life so that's really interesting yeah so yeah you might want to think about that um but yeah so what you need to be able to do is EN, ENFP is a big idea people. So you need to be able to like have the freedom to think about those ideas and then have somebody to work with to help you bring those ideas into reality and action. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you all so right. much. All right. All right. All right. Um, so yeah, that's, I mean, if that, that's all you got, um, then, you know, I mean, you know, we can go ahead. Um, if you have any other questions, you can feel free to come on and like, ask any other questions. Uh, or think, other than that, we're good. Yeah, I think that's it. I think you gave me a lot. So <laughs> I really right. appreciate it. All right. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Talk to you. All right. So um, I have about 10 minutes. I may end the live early, but I have 10 minutes. If anybody wants to hop in, let me know um, in the hot seat real quick.
with a question, then I can um, knock it out for them. Give everybody a couple seconds in the chat to like state if they want to um, hop on real quick. If not, you know, I appreciate your time. And um, it was an awesome, you know, um, hour or 50 minutes. And I appreciate everybody for joining. Um, I want to thank my guests, um, um, Sheena and Maisha for hopping on. Hopefully we was able to help them solve some problems. And I'll see you guys next week.